Today I'm going to show you how you can resolve a rattling exhaust shield. I'll also explain to you why they come loose and rattle in the first place and show you how you can prevent that from happening in the future once it's been fixed. Stay tuned, let me show you how. You can use this method on any car, but I'm using my Saab as the example today. Doesn't matter what car you've got, almost certainly this will work for you. I've raised the left side of my car quite high off the ground for the purposes of this. Not so much because it needs to be high in order to do the job, but so that I can get better access underneath for filming the job. You may not need to jack your car as high as this. And if you do need a little extra height and you haven't got any stands, try this. Put two wheels up on a kerb. Gives you extra access underneath. I spent years working on my road rally car doing that. I've also dropped my exhaust to the ground for the same reasons. Again, you may not need to do this. If your shield is simply loose on the body above the silencer, you may well be able to access it without dropping the silencer down. But again, I'm, I'm doing it to make it easier to do the filming. Even if it's all still in place, your exhaust is up here and the heat shield is above it, but just loose, try and remove as many of the fixings as you can. You'll find that they look something like what I'm showing you on the screen now and are fitted over small weld studs on the body. And what you'll probably find is that these fixings are made of steel, which they pretty much have to be because uh, only spring steel is suitable for uh, this application. Here's one on my Saab. Here's the fixing that goes over the stud. The stud comes up through or comes down through a six mil hole in the shield. But over the years, what's happened, as you can see, is that the aluminium of the shield has rotted away around the fixing so that the fixing can now pass through that hole, which means the shield falls down from position. This fixing used on the Saab, luckily, has a hex on the top of it and is easy to get off by simply undoing with an 8mm socket. You might have a fixing like this though, where there's like a star in the middle and the points of those stars grips the stud. You'll have no choice but to use a pair of fine nose pliers or a screwdriver to bend those points out to release them from the stud. And before you actually attempt this repair, the first thing to do is try and find some fixings similar to this that are bigger than the original fixings and therefore bigger than the holes in the uh, shield. If you're struggling to find something of uh, bigger size, don't worry, I have a solution for that. Get yourself a few aluminium drinks cans and either with a saw, a pair of tin snips or even a decent pair of scissors, cut the bottom of the can off and then drill an eight millimeter or six millimeter hole in the middle of the uh, dish in the bottom of the can. And with a pair of pliers, squeeze down the cut edge to make a, a nice edge so you can handle them without fear of cutting your fingers. If you've got any or if you can get some or if you can be bothered, paint the can bottom that you've just cut off. Any paint will do, whatever you happen to have on the shelf in the garage. Put two or three coats on and then if you can, leave it to dry in the garage overnight. Now I've seen another video which suggested using the lids off a steel can. Now I would not suggest that you do that because it's galvanic corrosion that causes the problem in the first place. The galvanic corrosion between the fixings and the aluminium heat shield. If you use a, a large steel washer, then that large steel lid will also cause galvanic corrosion and you'll end up with an even bigger hole in your shield than what you started with, making the problem multiple times worse. So stick with aluminium and put a painted surface on it to separate it from the steel fixing. If you use new fixings like I've done here and use good quality ones, then at the very least this repair should last as long as the original uh, installation did. By whatever means you can, hold your shield up into place. You, you could even use some uh, gaffer tape temporarily. Take one of your freshly made big aluminium washers and put it over, over one of the studs. Do the same with your new exhaust shield fixing. Put a socket up against that with an extension. Around a 13 or 15 millimeter socket. It needs to be large enough to allow the tangs to slide over the stud, but small enough to push the washer up. 
if you can do this by hand by pushing it up great otherwise give this a smack with a hammer the new fixing has now taken a grip on the stud give it a good smacking into place you've now got the new fixing a large aluminium washer which you've painted but it's the same material as the heat shield anyway so you'll get no galvanic corrosion between the shield and the washer and you've got a steel fixing which is separated from the aluminium by a layer of paint that you've put on and also by the corrosion protection that the uh, fixing comes with which will probably be a, a, a geomet or sim similar coating repeat that process on all the other fixings job jobbed put your exhaust back into place and you're good to go if you got value from this video consider supporting the channel and i shall see you on the next video